Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 I didn't know at all. I yeah. Said, you said it wasn't on the syllabus? What? <laughs> so, <laughs> back to this. Okay, I, I'm going to go to the Uh-huh. So, we need chapter seven, I think. So it's chapter eight. Yeah, you could say that. So, chapter, is there, is there a chapter eight in there? There isn't, is there? Right? <laughs> and then when I did my homework, I used the volume three. Oh yeah? Yeah, I, well, so I didn't pay attention, you know, if this chap in this book, chapter seven is the last one. Okay. I didn't know. Well, I think I can blast through uh, 2.1 super fast because this also is review, and it's also it, it's probably even a review for your physics class. Yeah. Speaking of, so we were talking about uh, multiplying factors together. Yeah. So as they come out the plane or whatever. Uh, oh, like product rule, cross rule. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's things called the dot product yeah, and the cross sense. product, and um, 2.1 and 2.2 is actually just. It's not until 2.3 and 2.4 that we get to the dot and the cross product. Okay. So 2.1 is going to be reviewed. 2.2 is really the same thing as 2.1. It's just through the third dimension. You know what I mean? But all the, all the, the only things we're talking about in 2.1 is just like how to multiply. No, no, no. Yeah, how, what, it, how, what it means to add vectors together. And we talked about that in pre-calculus. Um, I can do it with, with vectors like this. If I draw two arrows, you know, then I can add these together and get this one. If this is u and this is v, then this is u plus v. You see what I mean? And you add them head to tail. But algebraically, if I say that u equals 5 and 1, and v is written as like 4 and negative 2, then u plus v, right? Mm -hmm. I can accomplish what I just did in the picture algebraically very simply by just taking the x coordinate here and adding to the x coordinate there. And taking the x coordinate here and adding to the y coordinate there. I mean, the y coordinate here and adding to the y coordinate there. I just did the same thing in both cases, right? So that's 9 and neg negative 1. See that? And so that's what I, so I just did over there what, the same things what I did right here. Okay? And you can also, so you can add and subtract vectors in a similar way. Uh, the way I would subtract two vectors, u minus v, you could think of it as just subtracting. So it's, just, it's really equivalent to normal subtraction. It's like what you're just subtracting twice, right? Which amounts to just saying one and what, three in this case? But um, what we can also see is that uh, we have what's a, so just like in subtraction of regular numbers, you can think of the subtraction of vectors As subtraction of vectors is like adding a scalar multiple of another vector, right? In other words, it's like, a, and so in this picture, you can see that if I had taken the opposite, right, of v, negative 1 times v takes that vector and points it in the opposite direction. So this right here would be minus one times v, or, or minus v for short. So that when you add these two together, you instead get this vector. This is u minus v, right? But um, you can really kind of look at the sum and the difference all in the picture if you just imagine like a parallelogram. Because, you're, again, this is v, this is u. We, we, we've talked before how um, the location of the vector is irrelevant. The defining characteristics of the vector is its magnitude and direction, not its location. 
So this U is really literally the same as that U. This V is literally the same as that V. And notice that it gives you the same result. So addition of vectors is commutative, just like addition of regular numbers is commutative. And furthermore, the difference is the other diagonal of this parallelogram. See that? That's u minus v right there. v minus u would just be going the opposite direction. And um, everything I'm saying right here is not specific to the vectors in the plane. It's also true for vectors in three space. Okay? So we can talk about three dimensional vectors in 2.2 as well. But um, yeah, and I don't think they talk about anything else in that section. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a couple operations that are, we're going to be using a lot in this, in this chapter, right? And um, so one that very often we're going to be interested in unit vectors. That is to say, a vector of length one, right? And so, so like, 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 sometimes like I, I might, I might want to pull from a vector the direction, but not the magnitude. You know what I mean? So what? The, and so what I do is I shrink it down to a vector of length one. Okay. You see what I mean? So for example, if I want to know the the unit vector that's going in this direction kind of like this one right here. It's going in this direction, but it only has a length of one. Then I can do that with another type of scalar multiple. I, I just showed you an example of a scalar multiple with negative one. But I can use this, this symbol. It looks like an absolute value, right? But you know it's not an absolute value because that's not a number. That's a vector. So this is the, the, the length of the vector. This is the magnitude of the vector, right? And what that is, so the length of that vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinates. Yeah. Yeah. A little bigger than five, five point one maybe. And so that's the length of the vector, right? So with that in mind, I can just shrink, I just want to shrink it by that amount. So it's going to be this vector times that scalar. Notice this is a vector, that's not a vector. Right. So we can do, this is called scalar multiplication. It's not true multiplication in the sense that we're used to. This is scalar multiplication. In this class, we're going to have three types of vector multiplication. Scalar multiplication is what you do when you have a vector and a scalar. And by scalar, I mean just a normal real number. The dot product is how you take two vectors and multiply them to get a scalar. The cross product is how you multiply two vectors and get a vector. So there are different kinds of multiplication, but none of them have carry with them all the properties of multiplication that you're used to. So you have to be very careful. That's why I really hesitate to call it multiplication, period. Because <laughs> it might mislead you into thinking it's like multiplication as you know it, right? right? So, so yeah, so you have this, right? So um, in this case, that would be one over the square root of 26 times five, one. As a scalar multiple, that would be five over the square root of 26, one over the square root of 26. that, this right here, that's a true, um, this is a, a vector of length one. And it's going in the same direction as that vector. I've literally shrunk it down so that now it's this, going in the same direction, but now it's only a, a length of one. You see, if this was like, if this right here was the origin, it would be right on the unit circle. Yes, there would be, that means I could actually, if I wanted to, I could even express this in terms of some angle. Okay. So that's a unit vector. And 
that. So just a, a simple application of a scalar multiple. And um, sometimes, you know, we're going to use, the book will use a different notation. And um, lots of teachers do, it's very common for teachers and physics teachers to jump between these two notations. I kind of favor this like, kind of like corner bracket notation. But a lot of teachers will use a different notation. Or they'll say like this. They're going to write these in terms of these uh, basis vectors. That's a term from linear algebra. But for us, we're just going to, instead of calling them basis vectors, we're going to call them um, unit, um, standard unit vectors. That's the vector that's going right here to uh, 1, 0. And right here, going to 0, 1. Okay. What I'm going to do is instead of writing 1, 0, I'm just going to write it as I hat. And this one I'm going to, this, I'm going to denote it as J hat. See what I mean? So that now I could, re I could rewrite U as 5 times um, 1, 0 plus 1 times 0, 1. See what I've done is I've decomposed it, right? But you can see if you distribute 5 and 5, 0, 0, 1, put it together, you get a U. So we would write it as 5i plus j. So this could be rewritten as 4i minus 2j. It's just notation. It's just a different way of saying the same thing. But it's kind of nice because almost because now I can think of vectors as if they were polynomials. You know what I mean? Like, in other words, if I wanted to do u plus v, that would be 5i plus j plus 4i minus 2j. It's like a polynomial, except instead of having x's, you have these i hats. Instead of y's, you have these j hats. So, but just like polynomials, you, you combine the like terms, right? And then here. So it's kind of nice. That's the nice thing about it. And, um, but unlike polynomials, you will never, unless I do it by accident, so you will never catch me writing this. What does that mean? I times I. This is not this I is not the square root of negative one. It's not the square root of negative one. I tried to make it look different. And and this is a vector. Right? I the, the square root of negative one isn't a vector. That's a vector. And then this multiplication, like it's not scalar multiplication, because that's not a scalar. Right. It could be interpreted as a dot product or as a cross product, but we haven't gotten there yet. But even then, it, it wouldn't mean what you would want it to be when you think of that. <laughs> so you were saying the first i and second i is different? No, these are the same. All oh, those are the same. But I'm, I'm, I'm calling it a question like, what, what is that dot? We only, I only know what scalar multiplication is. I don't know what, you know, how to put two vectors together. Later we'll get into the dot product and the cross product, but that's not going to really settle this. Okay? That's why I said you'll never catch me writing that unless I do it by mistake. Okay, get slapped. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so 2.1, uh, 2.2 is, that, that's pretty much the entirety of 2.1, assuming that, you know, you have some familiarity with vectors to begin with. 2.2, all the arithmetic is the same. The only difference is you have to imagine having a, an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. 
And what we do is we just agree to always draw the same way, always having the X coming out at you, always having the Y going to the right, always having the Z going up. At least in math classes. Why is that? Just because. So that we all have all our pictures look the same. Yeah, but I mean, we started off wanting X and Y. Mm -hmm. Why can't Z come off to the side? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, I don't know. I guess. I mean, you, like for example, like if you're doing like, like computer graphics, if you're doing computer graphics, they use a different convention. Because right? usually on the, on the computer screen, they want to have the origin be the upper left-hand corner and have this be oh. X and this be Y. You, you were saying Y is like X, Y, Z? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, they, it, there's reason. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember, but in the Facebook, they have this, like special. You don't have to use that, but there is like certain like like rule. Yeah. So it should be like X and Y and Z. So X to the Y is like mm -hmm. counter counterclockwise. Yeah, but like, even counterclockwise isn't clear. Right. Counterclockwise isn't good enough because it depends on if I'm looking down at this, it would be counterclockwise. If I'm looking up at it, it would be no. What I mean is like when you from the Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the Z. Right. From the positive Z. So what we do, see like, and, and actually it doesn't have to be this way. Right. Like for example in Russia, in Mother Russia, they do it this way. You know what I mean? So, so there's going to be, there, there's going to be issues for mathematicians from Russia communicating with mathematicians mm -hmm. from the United States having nothing to do with Putin. <laughs> Right? <laughs> but yeah, like right here, this is what's called the right hand rule. Because if you go from X to Y, if you're, if you imagine like sweeping, so like oh. this is X, can you add it to you this edge of the table? Right. Yeah. This goes to, this is Y, and Z's coming up. If I, if I do an alphabetical order, my fingers sweep through X and then Y, it yeah. forces my thumb to point in the positive Z direction. But if I try to do the same thing in, in Russia, I'd find myself having to go like this, and my thumb's pointing in the negative Z direction. So they use the left hand rule. We use the right hand rule. Yeah, that's what they. But of they course, were. but of course, we're right. <laughs> in physics, yeah, they were like in physics class. They're like, yeah, it's the right hand rule. Yeah. You point with the first vectors going <laughs> with your thumb, and then the second vector is your pointer finger, and then whichever way your finger can point mm. up and down is the. Uh, actually what those products should be at so about same thing as you go oh, okay to. so all right first yeah. vector is forward second vector is going that way I'm going up so okay I see yeah. so yeah so we're going to use the right hand rule in this class well, exclusively exclusively <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah and so but when we talk about these vectors in the in three space then if I want to go, if you imagine a vector that's coming out at you, maybe two steps along here and three steps along here and four steps up, mm -hmm. this point is going to be have an x coordinate of two, a y coordinate of three, and a z coordinate of four. And that would be this point. And as a vector, it would be the vector that's starting here and ending there. Mm -hmm. you see? So we can talk about that vector, and you can add it to like another vector that's going like this, another vector that's going like that. And then the sum of these three vectors would be this vector going like this, right? Right. So yeah, and so it's pretty, uh, pretty cool what you can do there. So two one and two two are pretty similar. The only difference is it's just have an extra dimension, which just means that there's just an extra coordinate. Algebraically, is is simple. Geometrically, it might be a, more of a challenge to visualize two point two, right? And um, but yeah, like shrinking a, a vector, if. Uh, if you was, you know, one, two, three, and if I want a unit vector, right? If I want to do a unit vector, I'm going to do it the same way I did before. But the, what's the length of a vector in three space now? It's pretty, it's, it's analogous actually. Right. Right. 
one step this way, two steps that way, puts me about right here. Now I've got to go up by three, right? If you imagine, it's like the, it's like it's the opposite corner of a box. A box with dimensions of one, two, and three. Right? Well, if you just look at the bottom of the box, I can use the Pythagorean theorem here to find this distance right there. That's going to be square root of five. But now, if, cut, if, you, if I cut through the diagonal of the box and look at this right triangle, you see it? Where this side length is root five, this side length is three. This side length would be Right? But ultimately, what I was doing is I was taking 1 squared plus 2 squared to get 5 plus 3 squared to get 14. So that's going to be 2.3, when we start talking about the dot product, it'll be in connection with projections. Dot products comes in really handy with projections. Like, it's like this vector that I was describing right here, mm -hmm. 
like one, two, three. This this vector casts a shadow. If I was if I had like an actual thing, you can almost see if the light was bright, you'd see a shadow right here. If it was directly above, that shadow is the projection into the x y plane. Or if the light was over here, that same vector would pr would project into the y z plane right here. So I'd like to find like. I, I can use, use dot products to find the projection into each of these planes, or just an arbitrary. I could just make up my own plane like this and project it into that plane. You know what I mean? And then I can see, you know, a lot of times, you know, that's the, uh, the more relevant, you know, figure. You know, like, you know, like for example, like in in physics, in mechanics, you talk about how force equals mass times acceleration, right? Well, there's mass. A, there's a, uh, Mm -hmm. There's a freaking, there's an angle somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> technically you should be doing that. If you're dealing with, with, with that, you should be doing it with, um, acceleration should be treated like a vector. Yeah, Romeo, you know R, I mean? cosine, yeah. And so, but, but unfortunately, in an introductory physics class, they try to do that, ignoring the fact that it's a vector. Or, yes. You know what I mean? And it's like, and you miss out on a lot of the, there's a lot. There's a lot of these unifying principles that makes things a lot simpler. You know what I mean? And um, and, and and then the, and so, but and then I think like uh, what's the other example? You know, work is force multiplied by a dis by displacement. Force is a vector, and displacement is a vector. So when you multiply those, it's as a dot product. You know what I mean? And that dot Torque. product, and that dot product could be regarded as a projection. It's like the you're what you're really computing isn't the product but the shadow, so to speak. Torque, right? Um, no. Where the example? Where we're working torque are different, but yeah, but torque. It's torque, a projection. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Torque is also a projection. Yeah, you're right. Torque is um, what the length of the arm times the the rotation. So there's a force that's like yeah. So yeah. counter rotation. Plus the, which is the second vector. There's another vector, but nevertheless, mm -hmm. the torque is should point down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Power to the wheels. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, um, like some like physics classes, makes me confused because at the at the beginning, always I would ignore this, ignore that, and then later. Yeah. Hey, but right. like, <laughs> you know, the funny, you, funny you thing is, is like, yes. if you could, if you could, like, I mean, this is like a, this is completely hypothetical and it's never going to happen, right? Because it just isn't realistic. But ideally, if you could only begin physics once you've like completely mastered mathematics beyond like, <laughs> you know, in, in particular vector analysis and okay. calculus and all that, then you, imagine if you could learn it straight right from the very beginning with these, with these math. These are actually unifying principles. Right. Like physics would actually be easier. You know what I mean? Because then I can just make some more broad stroke statements that are really, you know, universal. More more universal. And and because they're more universal, they're they're harder. They're closer to the essence right. of the ideas. It's easy to get too bogged down in the, the 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 details, the trigonometry of it, and all the angles and stuff. When really, there's uh, much more bigger things that are going on that you want to take note of, you know? So, yeah, so like, if I can just say dot product, I can just kind of think, oh, it's just a dot product, and just move on, and if, 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 if I actually want to compute something, then I have to get under the hood, okay, how do I do a dot product, you know? And then that's where all the trigonometry will start to pop out. Right. But, you know, up until that point, you don't have to deal with it. Yeah, I think, if you don't matter, like, it's really hard, and, yeah. I mean, to learn and actually prove. Yeah, I, I, I've had to, t I've tried to tutor people who are taking like conceptual physics classes. So this is like non-math, non-physics majors, just taking it for a general education requirement. Mm -hmm. It's extremely difficult. I, I, I kind of pity them, you know? Yeah, because it's like, the, they literally have to memorize things that are interrelated, but they're not, I'm not allowed to show them how they're related. Right. They're just like, a, it's like taking, it's like trigonometry. You know, you have like, you have like a dozen different identities to memorize. Yeah. When in fact, all of those could be derived from one or two identities. You know what I mean? 
if I just knew the one or two identities and knew how to, de how to derive them, then I wouldn't have to memorize as much. 